This is the very first lens I ever bought. It's the Canon EF mount 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. It's also known as the Nifty 50 or Plastic Fantastic. And this thing's kind of cute. It's definitely very plasticky feeling and kind of feels like a toy to be honest. Nifty! Now this lens on the other hand is the Canon RF mount 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. And this thing is an absolute beast. Quite a bit of an upgrade from the Plastic Fantastic over here. And you can definitely feel a difference just holding both of these. This one is quite a bit heavier. They are nifty, they're nifty gifties. But I actually fell in love with photography because of the 50 millimeter lens. You can create such an amazing depth of field, especially when shooting at lower f-stops. So let's see if this $150 lens can compete with this $2,300 lens. Welcome back to the YouTube channel, friends. It's great to see you here. My name is Brian, and if you had a moment, that would be fantastic if you hit that like button for me, as well as subscribe to the channel. I've been receiving a ton of love on this channel lately, and it's super motivating to see. I've got a ton more videos coming your way that are fitness and photography and iPhone related, so definitely stick around, and I really do appreciate your support. Also, I did wanna remind you that Ali and I have recently started a podcast. It's called Happily Stuck Forever and Always. And it's just a really fun time. We have lots of fun conversations and you get to see a much more uncurated side to us. Hit the link in the description and go check out our podcast. So using my Canon R5, I took a bunch of photos in the same environments with the same camera settings. And I'm gonna go through each aspect of what makes a lens good and compare the two. Starting with the lens's ability to autofocus as well as how sharp the lens is, the distortion on the lens, the bokeh on the lens, as well as just how the lens transmits light. So let's go and start with the autofocus. Here's the fun part about all of this. I'm actually gonna give this lens away to one lucky person. This is a brand new lens and all you have to do for your chance to win this lens is like this video and comment something nice below. And I'm gonna select a winner on Monday, July 25th, 2022. So if you're watching this video after that date, well, you missed your chance, but it's great to see you here anyways. Now keep in mind, I'm using the EF to R lens adapter with my Canon R5. So this allows me to use EF mount lenses with my Canon R5. This adapter is about a hundred bucks. So if you wanted to get this as well as the Nifty 50, you'd be looking at about 250 US dollars. But after this review, you might think that's worth it. Now with the autofocus on the Nifty 50 with this adapter and my Canon R5, I really didn't run into any issues. It focused super fast. And when I'm on location trying to hit focus on Ali, or just make sure whatever I'm taking a picture of is in focus, it all works really well. And honestly, that EF to R adapter is fantastic. I've used other EF lenses that I have with this adapter with my R5, and I don't even notice a difference between that and the native RF lenses. Now, one thing where most lenses really tend to struggle in terms of autofocus is when you're backlighting a subject. And this is typically when your light source is directly behind the subject and there's some light going straight into the lens. Again, I didn't run into any issues here with this. And even in low light situations, the Nifty 50 performed great with the autofocus. Now on the RF lens, it's just flawless autofocus as well. Now I will say when you're shooting fully wide open at f1.2, it's not so much that the lens has a hard time focusing, but it's such a shallow depth of field that a lot of times you think you're focusing on the right thing and you're really not. If you are using the RF 1.2 50 millimeter, it might be smart to stop up to F1.8 or even F2, depending on what you're shooting. One of the main factors in determining lens quality is how sharp a lens is. Now, poor quality lenses are gonna give you images that are sharper in the center, but the closer you get to the corners of that image, the softer the sharpness of that image can be. So let's take a look at a few photos here and compare the two. Now, this first image here was shot at F4 with the Nifty 50, fully zoomed out. It looks pretty sharp, but let's take a look if you zoom in here to how about this rock right here? And as you can tell, it's still a bit sharp, but it's lacking a bit of that clarity that you'd like to see. Now, if we go to the very center of this image, you can definitely see there's a bit more sharpness here, especially like in this area right here. Now let's take a look at the same image shot on the RF lens. And this is the same rock formation. And you can see quite a difference here in terms of sharpness. There's way more clarity here on this end of the image than there is here on the Nifty 50. If we 
zoom out on both of these images, it's pretty hard to tell which one is sharper. So a big part where this would come into play is if you're wanting to sell prints of, let's say an image like this, if part of that print isn't super sharp, that might be a problem for you. But on most phone screens and computer screens, you're not really gonna notice this. Now let's take a look at a few portraits that I shot here of Ali, starting with this one. And this portrait was shot with the Nifty 50. And all of these images, by the way, have a light edit on them, but I've added really no grain to them just to ensure that we can really see the clarity of the image. So if we zoom in on Ali's face here, you can definitely see that there's quite a bit of clarity here with this Nifty 50 EF mount lens. Now let's jump over to this image here with the RF lens. That's pretty sharp as well. We're zoomed in here to 400% in Lightroom. Both of these look quite sharp. There's quite a bit of detail. I would have to say there's just a little bit more sharpness with the RF, but again, when you fully zoom out, that's pretty hard to notice. Now remember, being that this is more of a portrait and a lot of this background is supposed to be out of focus anyways, having sharpness on these edges here doesn't really come into play because again, it's out of focus. Now let's take a look at this tight detail shot of this old Canon film camera here. Now if we zoom into where I'm hitting focus right here on this Canon logo, and this one was shot on the Nifty 50, you can definitely see it's sharp, but there's a little bit of softness there. If we jump over to the RF mount lens, you can see right where I'm hitting focus and that is nice and tack sharp. For detail shots like this, you can definitely see a difference there. Keep in mind, in post-processing, you can just bump the sharpening a little bit and you can actually bring back some of that clarity. So I just bumped the sharpening actually quite a bit on the Nifty 50 and then jumping back over to the RF, I mean, we're getting more or less the same sharpness. Again, very zoomed in here. So when you zoom back out, it's almost not noticeable to the eye. Now let's take a closer look at lens distortion. When I say distortion, I mean those warped edges in any lens because it's circular is gonna give you some amount of distortion, especially if you're shooting with wider lens, you're really gonna get that almost fisheye bubbled effect. But higher quality lenses are gonna give you a lot less distortion in a much flatter picture. Now a $150 lens versus a $2,300 lens. Let's see how this lens distortion really compares. Now a nice thing about about Lightroom is that it can actually detect what lens you're using and you have the option to enable profile corrections. And what this does is simply remove the lens distortion that any lens is gonna give you. So if we take a look at this image here, shot with the Nifty 50, the distortion in that profile correction has not been enabled. But if I check the box here, you can actually see how much it's actually correcting that distortion on the lens. So with the Nifty 50 here, you can see there's definitely a decent amount of profile corrections that it's making. Now, if we switch over to the RF lens, again, this enable profile correction has been checked off, but if I check it on, let's see how much it's actually correcting this lens here. Right away, you can see there's quite a bit less distortion that it's having to correct. Now keep in mind, without the relative example of this profile correction, it can actually be hard to tell just by looking at an image how much distortion is on it. So for this example, you can definitely say that the Nifty 50, that $150 lens has a bit more distortion around those edges, but it's really not super noticeable if you don't have that immediate before and after to compare it to. So I'll definitely give that Nifty 50 a strike for having a bit more lens distortion, but it's, in my opinion, not that huge of an issue. Now let's take a look at the bokeh of each lens. If you don't know what bokeh is, it's basically what's out of focus in an image. And the more bokeh that you have, the more depth you're gonna create, the more separation you're gonna be able to emulate between what's in focus or your subject and the background. So these first two shots here, I actually wanted to compare the bokeh between shooting at f1.8 and shooting at f1.2. And if you look here at the Nifty 50 at f1.8, you can still see quite a bit of just fantastic bokeh. This is about a medium 
frame framed portrait. It's not super tight, but it's not super wide shot. So you still get that depth, all of these trees, everything is just nicely out of focus. And honestly, the bokeh looks great. Now let's jump over to the RF lens. And this is shot at F 1.2. And you can really see that bokeh is just like nice and creamy. The bokeh looks fantastic. But taking a look at the Nifty 50 here, this bokeh is almost more prominent. It almost sticks out a bit more. Whereas this one is quite soft and quite creamy. What am I even describing here? It sounds like I'm describing some freaking peanut butter or something. I almost like the bokeh on the Nifty 50 here because it really pops. It's more distinguished bokeh, but really at this point, it's a preference thing. Now moving on here to this image where we've got a really tight shot of this little foliage. This was shot at F1.8 with the Nifty 50 and you can see lots of just delicious bokeh here. And then on the RF lens, this was also shot at F1.8. Again, a little bit more distinguished bokeh on the Nifty 50 versus the RF. It's just a much softer blurred background. I don't know, I kind of like the uh, the Nifty 50 though. I mean, if you just look at the image quality of both of these, both look great. If I just showed you both of these, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Let me know in the comments if you think you could. Lastly here, this was shot with the Nifty 50, another portrait of Allie and you see all this bokeh is just nice and popping. All these little sexy bokeh circles. They're just, hmm. This is just why I love the 50 millimeter. It's just such a great lens. Here on the RF, again, you get a little bit softer bokeh. It's a bit creamier. Both look really good. I personally don't really feel like the RF lens, the $2,300 lens is leaps and bounds ahead in terms of bokeh and that out of focus depth that you're able to create with the 50 millimeter. Now you may not think that the lens actually affects the colors produced in an image, but it actually does. Depending on the different glass formulas and coatings that are used to make a lens, this is actually gonna impact the way that lens transmits the frequencies of light. When you go higher up in quality, you typically have nicer glass, you're gonna get nicer coatings, which is gonna transmit light a lot nicer than lower end lenses. Now one of the first things we're gonna look for is chromatic aberration, and this is also known as fringing. Chromatic aberrations are one of the main indicators of lower quality lenses and the result is usually seen in higher contrast images and it typically produces this greenish purple kind of halo around those edges of really bright parts of an image meeting darker parts of an image. So just keep all this in mind as we look at some of these images here. Now this first shot here is another portrait of Allie and if we zoom in right here on her nose you can definitely see some of that fringing, some of those chromatic aberrations happening here on those higher contrast elements of the image. Now another nice thing with Lightroom is with one click of a button you can remove those chromatic aberrations. So let's see what happens when I click this here and absolutely nothing's happening. Lightroom really isn't even interpreting some of this fringing as enough to try and correct it, but it's definitely still there. Now let's take a look at the RF lens here and we can see there is quite a bit less chromatic aberrations there. Even if I click this button here to remove chromatic aberration, obviously nothing's happening there, but you can definitely see a pretty big difference between that purplish glow around her nose there versus here. I mean, you get almost nothing. You get a little bit of that green hue, but it's nowhere near what this is. Let's zoom out. At this perspective, it's pretty hard to notice any of that fringing. Now, if we take a look at this image here, I'm really trying to find some issues with the Nifty 50, but we can see a little bit of that purple hue around Ali's hair here as compared to the RF lens. The RF is a bit more on the greenish side, but it's almost nothing. With a $150 lens and you get almost no chromatic aberrations here like that's quite impressive. Now the next thing we'll look at concerning light is vignetting and this is also a byproduct of the distortion that we just previously talked about but let's take a look and quick compare how much vignetting is on the nifty 50 versus the RF. Now another nice thing about Lightroom is that when you enable those profile corrections it will also remove some of that vignetting that occurs. So by clicking this box let's see how much vignetting is being removed and this image has been shot with the nifty 50s. 
there's quite a bit of vignetting that is being removed there. And typically you get more vignetting when you're shooting wide open at lower f-stops. I personally like a little bit of vignetting. So if I were to enable these profile corrections, I would probably take this slider and bring it back a little bit because it just makes the image a bit more moody, a little bit more dynamic. I mean, that's just my personal preference. Now, taking a look at the RF lens, let's do the same thing here and it's removing some of the vignetting when I check on the box, but definitely not nearly as much as the Nifty 50. Again, it's my preference that there is a bit of vignetting. I may not even enable profile corrections if I'm being fully honest. It's not like you have to. Now, the last thing I wanted to touch on were the colors that each lens can produce on the images. And if we take a look at these two images here, I have not done any editing. They're both shot with the same white balance with the same exact settings. I've simply adjusted the exposure to make them as close as possible. Now, one of the things I actually did notice is that the RF lens produces a slightly warmer, slightly more greenish hue compared to the Nifty 50. I actually almost feel like the $150 lens gives me a bit more true color to the actual scene that I was shooting on location compared to the $2,300 lens. And even if you look here at the histogram, you can see where some of the those blues, greens, and yellows are coming through. Compared to this image shot on the Nifty 50, there's just a little bit less of those yellows and greens. And this actually, as maybe small of a difference this might seem, it makes a big difference when editing these photos. I kind of prefer the $150 lens in terms of the colors that it produces versus the $2,300 lens. Does the Nifty 50 actually compete with the RF 50 millimeter 1.2 lens? I personally think it does. Now here are the things that you'll simply need to consider if you're wanting to use a $150 Nifty 50 lens. You're gonna have a little bit softer edges. It's not gonna be as tack sharp all the way across the image. You're gonna have to deal with some of those chromatic aberrations and you'll as well have to deal with a bit more distortion, a little bit more curvature around those edges. But the chromatic aberrations and the distortion, as you can see in Lightroom, can be fixed with like one click of a button. And on this particular focal lens, Length, it's really not that noticeable unless you're like immediately comparing the before and after. So other than needing to buy the EF to R adapter, it definitely competes quite well against a $2,300 lens. Well, this was definitely a fun comparison. I hope you enjoyed it. Also, if you need good music for your videos, you can go to moodsounddesign.com. It's the music licensing company that I started. You can start a free 14 day trial with us. And if you do that, we're gonna send you four of my video LUTs as well as five of my Lightroom presets, so go get on that. Well, thank you guys so much again for watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace. Peace.